Welcome to this webinar on test driven requirements engineering. My name is Christoph Ebert and I will guide you through this webinar. I'm the managing director of Vector Consulting Services and so please do not hesitate to contact us after you have listened to this podcast so that you get a good idea about uh, how test driven requirements engineering would be of help to you. This is part two of a three part series. And in the first part, we have introduced to the foundations, and now we dive deeper. You might realize that we have uh, slightly adjusted the uh, second word of this abbreviation. It looks uh, pretty similar on a distance because we simply made a D or driven from the O of oriented. The reason behind is very simple we came to the conclusion that driven is stronger than oriented and given that we want to make a strong push here we thought it's reasonable since we are still in part two that we uh, can still make this change so the majority of the three um, uh, podcasts would have the right abbreviation of course we also use the same abbreviation tdre uh, in our pu publications so uh, there's also an article in IEEE software which accompanies this webinar and you will then also have more information in this article. Also, you can of course follow our uh, Twitter, which is at VectorVCS in order to get more information on this and related topics. Let us dive into the foundations of test-driven requirements engineering. And what I want to show you first is the reasoning why requirements and tests have such a close relationship. Here's a requirement which we have from IoT and the requirement is pretty simple. When servicing iHome, iHome being just an IoT home automation, configuration data is automatically presented in the same way as last time. The obvious reasoning is a business need, it's user experience. It's something which we all like. We want to open the system and it should give us the same look and feel as before. So far so good, but what do we really mean with it? Is it the same appearance in terms of what we have done before, what others have been doing before, or our own instantiation? Can we adjust the instantiation in all possible way, or is it like three sets to select from? Three skins, as we call it in mobile devices, so there are many things which for a designer is room for creativity, but for a contract can be disastrous. A contract needs to be clear because at the end you have to accept it or your customer have to accept it or not. And this is exactly where the tester comes into the picture and where test please plays a major role. A tester looks at this requirement in a way, can I test it? And the, short, the clear answer is no. It's not testable. It's not clear enough. Same way as last time is wake. And this is something which we have to clarify. So test helps in making our requirements better. Test is actually the best possible partner for the requirements engineer. Designers, salespeople, marketing, product management, they all are creative, which is good. It helps at times to make the top line better. But when it comes to the bottom line, it's sometimes also good to have a tester on board because the tester ensures that we deliver a good quality and we have not much rework. So top line and bottom line matter. That means test matters a lot. And let's now look into what it really means. Test requirements engineering is in a way related towards what you all know from HR, which is test driven development, TDD. TDD was coined many years ago in a mode, which means we start with a unit test case, and then we write a code which satisfies this unit test case. Big advantage. First, our code runs in the way the test is written. Second, the test typically is easier to check than the code. Third, we have a regression test case. That means if there's a change and we use a Jenkins workbench or something similar, we can just rerun this unit test case, see the code is still working as it was originally specified, perfect. 
Let's do the same for requirements on the product and system level. That means we move the test orientation upwards, we write a system or product test case as a requirement. The big benefit, same as in TDD, we have a requirement which is testable. We have a test case readily available. We don't have to bother at the end of the project, ah, oh, where are my test cases? I might have insufficient coverage. I have no traceability. We have perfect traceability. And we have certainly also a very decent review of the requirement. We are not just writing a requirement which later on creates fussiness and problems. So that's the idea. And of course, it means also we want to see more reasons behind. Now let us look a little bit into the major worries with insufficient requirements quality. First, we often mix perspectives. We jump far too fast into the realization before we understand the need. We have an inadequate assumptions, like in our previous example, what do we really want to achieve? The terminology is incorrect. We use and mix should, would, could, while the verb normally should be shall or will. We have unclear impression, expressions, it supports, etc., e.g., and or, or more. These are dangerous. These are really bad words for requirements because we have to be precise. E.g. means this can be the right thing, but something else can also be the right thing. The statements are fuzzy. They are not verifiable. That was our example the last time. What is last time? What is fast? What is simple? What is easy to use? What is a user-friendly interface? This bullshit, because we cannot really make a clear, testable statement about whether this is really what we want to achieve. How do we measure it's maintainable? Impossible. How do we measure it's secure? Impossible. How do we measure it's performant? Which load conditions? Impossible. So let's be precise. Test is something which has to be binary, decidable. Either it fails or it passes. It must be measurable. If we put a time in it, it must be reachable. And it should also be something which is part of our requirement. Now, further problems are missing requirements, like quality requirements often miss. We have universal quantifier. That's a very big sin because anything which we write uh, with the words all or many makes it legally very, very weak. If we say in all conditions, it means basically that we already failed to deliver the contract. I had a customer last year uh, in a big defense project where we have a detecting list situation. There was a spec which was signed by this um, big OEM uh, towards his uh, user, which is a defense department. And there were very often statements like all and many. And of course, I mean, when I do a review, I look at these things. And so we wondered why would they ever sign something like that? And they said, oh, well, we didn't really think about it. We thought, uh, we thought it's this what we could typically call the sunny day scenario. But of course, there is no sunny day in practice. Practice is like uh, November weather. It's raining, it's gray, it's not always sunny day. And that means leave out these words because they really bring you in severe danger. And finally, over-specification. We can put too much solution in the requirement that makes it maybe nice to look at, but at the same time, how to implement because the solution space gets smaller and smaller. So from that perspective, let's be clear that we write good requirements and that brings us into not only test orientation, but also that we improve our cost. Rework will get much smaller if the requirements are clear from the beginning. What helps a lot is the testable template structure for each single requirement. That means that a requirement follows a simple template, which is an entry condition. It's a constraint, which um, is what has to be done if this entry condition fulfills, and an exit, which is a post condition. 
Now, this is uh, something which uh, we all have learned in computer science very early. Entry and exit condition help us very much with testability. But at the same time, it's also clear that it will help us in a better understanding. And that is rather than long sentences with complex structure, we can write sentences like that. Of course, we enrich them with pictures, with uh, tables, but essentially we follow the structure. By the way, the structure is rather old and I should get, give credits uh, to my dear friend Susan Robertson, uh, who has uh, coined uh, this template already uh, many years ago. And um, I think it's, it's some of a big achievement to use these kind of templates. The example of this uh, testable requirement is, uh, for instance, uh, when activating the dashboard, iHome will represent the same parameters of the current room. So it is, of course, very short, but that means uh, the parameters of the current room are presented. So that's a testable requirement. That's a requirement which, by the way, applies not only as a template for a system, but also for interfaces and for user interaction. So we have pretty much a structure which uh, helps in all typical cases. Now, from a perspective of how are we going to achieve that, I recommend that we utilize the so-called triple peak model of requirement, solution, and test. The triple peak means that we have an abstraction of a mountain, if you want, which stretches the clouds in the top and sits fat on the floor on the earth. That means we start with a need, which is wake, which is a cloud. We look into this need, we come to an initial solution or several solutions. That is, we move into the horizontal solution mountain, which is also still very abstract. And we think in terms of, is it testable? What would a test case look like? And that is for sure a sunny day test case, because if you are really at the top of the peak, this is where you meet the sun. So on that level, the sunny day would apply. Based on this knowledge, we move backwards, we refine the solution to remain testable, and we have new questions related to this requirement, the need and the constraints. And that brings us in a cyclic way downwards towards more and more concrete understanding of the need, which then allows us then to really deliver a solution. This peak model was initially suggested as a twin peak model by Bashan Nusebi, which is already a quite seasoned article. It's about 20 years old, but a very nice baseline where he talked about uh, the twin peak of requirement and design. Uh, we have afterwards refined it towards what we call the triple peak of requirements, design or solution, and testing, where we really build and deliver the product. Now, on this way from the requirement to the solution and test, we have two ways to move. We go from left to right. That means from the requirement to the product. That is what we call the forward TDRE. It means a test case is generated, and this is the baseline then for the underlying requirement and vice versa. Test and requirement will fit together. In the best possible case, by the way, you'd simply use in your requirements tool, like DOORS, the requirement as a test case. We have done many such projects and it works perfectly. It's like if you work in TDD, you write a unit test case and you put the unit test case in the header of your, let's say, C module or function. This is fine because it gives you then also already a description of your code and here the same thing. We write a requirement in DOORS or in a other test suite, and we use it as the basis of our requirement, which is then the test case. Backward, that means we go from the requirement, we go from the test case back, means we can have two situations. One, the test case will find a defect. That's good because testers are paid on the defects found. A test case which doesn't find a defect doesn't tell us much. So if it finds a defect, we have an incentive to improve our design. This is the middle part. And we have an incentive to improve maybe also our requirements because they were not so clear. Maybe the test case only was negative 
because of a misunderstanding. So this backwards branch of this way from test to solution to need helps us to improve the solution, helps us to improve the requirements. Now, the other case would be that the test case did not deliver a defect. Well, this, as I said, is not so good news because a test case which doesn't yield a defect does not really tell us anything about quality. It simply says this test case has not found much. Maybe the defects are behind another stone. And that means in a negative case, we might have a redundant test case. We might have to improve coverage. We might have to rescope the test case a little bit so that next time it would find the test uh, defect. And that's basically it. So we have here the test driven requirements engineering starting with the need going to one or many solution alternatives and ending with a test case which is in line with the requirement or can be the same as the requirement we then go backwards we look based on a test result is our design good enough or do we need to make changes and is our requirement good enough to really build upon it and this is how we connect these three major disciplines of software engineering, the requirements engineering, the development and the validation verification, or simply speaking, the test. And on that basis, we then also have the test term requirements engineering, because we will have requirements which generate a value, which are testable, which don't have so much rework, and which typically, if they are really linked also in the tool, give us a savings of 30 even or even 40% of life cycle cost. Why? Because we have less rework, because we have less misunderstandings, because we have less wait cycles uh, in design and development and test, because the requirement is already sufficiently clarified. I hope uh, that you can now further on use this test tool requirements engineering. I thank you very much for listening to this podcast and in case you want to get more information, follow us on Twitter with Vector VCS or contact us at uh, www.vector.com slash consulting. Stay tuned. We will have more podcasts and we also have webinars. So you can uh, equally also evolve your competences there. Thank you and goodbye.